Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the brand new Fractal Meshify 2 Nano. Okay, let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix Z690 iGaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU I'm going to be using Intel's 12th Gen i7, the 12700K. Keeping our CPU cool I've got a 240mm AIO from Cooler Master, it's their Master Liquid PL240 Flux. For RAM I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 RGB at 5600 mega transfers per second. For storage I'm going with a single NVMe M.2 drive in this build. It's from Sabrent and it's their Rocket 4 Plus in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build I've got a 750W Platinum S of X power supply from Seasonic. It's their Focus SPX750. So it is important to say that the Meshify 2 Nano will accommodate full-sized ATX power supplies but because I want to test out the bottom fan mounting slot down in the power supply compartment, that's the reason I'm going with the SFX power supply. For the graphics card, I'm going to be using the NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti. And for case fans, I'm going to be using Lian Lee's AL120 Uni fans in white. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's get building. So I'm going to make a start by preparing our case. As we go, I'll point out the case's main features. So our tempered glass side panel features Fractal's toolless top latching mechanism. So to remove it, all we need to do is pull the clip out the back, bringing the panel out, and then lifting it away. The other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Pull the clip out the back, and lift the panel away. Taking a look at our case's front I.O., we've got a separate headphone and microphone jack, a single USB Type-C port, a power and reset button, and two USB 3.0 Type-A ports. Removing the case's top panel is really straightforward. All we need to do is push it up from the back and then the panel can simply be lifted away. At the top of the case we've got a nylon dust filter. Removing it again is also really straightforward. All we need to do is pull it backwards and then it can be lifted away. At the top of the case we've got a removable fan stroke radio bracket. It's held on with two screws. With the screws removed it's just a simple matter of tilting the bracket up and lifting away. And you can see this is not only going to make fitting fans and radiators at the top a bit easier, but it's going to give us better access into the main body of the case during the build. At the bottom of the case we've got a full length nylon dust filter which can simply be pulled out from the front. And it's great to see that we can do this with the front panel in place. Taking a look at our case's front panel, it operates very similarly to the other Meshify versions. So you pull on the Fractal logo, it's going to open up as a door. And the door is also removable if you wish. All you need to do is pull it out this way to fully remove the front panel. Take a look at the back of the door that we've just removed. There's another nylon dust filter on the back and to remove it all you need to do is pull it upwards. So Fractal are giving you a choice here. You can go just with a mesh at the front or mesh plus dust filter. The rest of the front panel is removable and it can simply be pulled off from the front. Take a look at the rear of the case. It's great to see that we've got a bracket for our power supply which is held on with two thumb screws. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix this to the back of our power supply, meaning that we can then insert it directly in from the back of the case and secure it with the two thumb screws. And that is definitely much easier than sliding the power supply in from the side and then screwing it in from the back. Moving into the main body of the case and the Meshify 2 Nano will support mini ITX and mini DTX motherboards. In terms of fan support, you're going to be able to fit two 140 or two 120 millimeter fans at the front. It's up to two 120 millimeter fans at the top, or one 140 millimeter fan. If you do want to go with a 140 millimeter fan, you are only going to be able to mount it at the front because the motherboard is going to get in the way, and you will have to use a slim 140 millimeter fan at the top, so it's a 15 millimeter thick fan rather than a standard 25 millimeter thick fan. If you go with 120s at the top, you should be able to fit standard. 25 millimeter thick fans and at the rear it's a single 120 millimeter fan. So you can see the case comes with two case fans pre-installed. So we've got a Dynamic X2 GP12 fan at the rear and a Dynamic X2 GP14 fan at the front. In terms of radiator support at the front you are going to be able to fit up to a 280 millimeter radiator at the top of the case you're going to be able to fit up to a 240mm radiator but again there is some restrictions to be aware of. In terms of width it's up to 121mm and there is going to be some restrictions in terms of your motherboard. RAM height and CPU pump height is up to 36mm. At the rear of the case you can fit up to 120mm radiator and again there is a width restriction of up to 121mm. 
If we prefer to go with an air cooler, you'll be pleased to hear you're going to be able to fit large premium air coolers in the Meshify 2 Nano, up to 167mm in height. In terms of GPU support, you can see we've got two horizontal PCI expansion slot covers at the back, although the case will support up to 2.8 slot cards, up to a maximum thickness of 57mm. In terms of GPU length, with the front fan installed, it's up to a maximum length of 308 millimeters, although if you do remove the front fan, it's up to 331 millimeters. If you're thinking of going with a custom loop, you'll be pleased to see we've got some slots over to the right-hand side of the motherboard for mounting a pump and reservoir. At the front of the case, we've got this two-part modular air duct, which is designed to provide increased airflow from the front fans up towards the GPU. This is removable to provide increased space for front mounted fans and radiators and as I mentioned it's in two parts and each of them is removed individually. So at the back of the case it's these two screws which hold the air ducts in place. So if you just want to remove the front one you need to remove this screw. If you want to remove them both you're going to need to remove both the screws. So we'll go ahead and get the screws removed. So at the moment with both the air ducts in place the space that we have for a front fan is 28 millimeters. So if we remove the front air duct, all we need to do is lift it up from here. So we've now increased the space at the front of the case to 72 millimeters for fans and radiators. So if we remove the second air duct, we've increased the space at the front for fans and radiators up to 138 millimeters. Now I'm planning on just putting an AIO at the front, so it's going to be a radiator and one set of fans. So I'm going to put our second air duct back into place. And then I'm just going to put the screw in at the back again. So moving into the rear compartment, it's great to see that we've got lots of Velcro cable straps, which should help with cable management. And it's great to see that we've got rubber grommets over the main cutouts into the front compartment. In terms of cable routing space, it's between 15 and 25 millimeters. We've got a dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting bracket here. To remove it, all we need to do is loosen up the thumb screw and the bracket can then simply be lifted down and away. So all you would do is fix your two and a half inch drive to here and then it'll simply slot back into here. Now there is an additional two and a half inch drive bracket in the case accessory box down at the bottom and with it in place then you're going to be able to mount one of the drives here and screw it in and then another one up here. The other option that you have is you can leave the drive installed in this position here and then use the additional drive bracket from the accessory box to mount the drive bracket in the main body of the case. The other thing just to point out when we're here is we've got a nice rubber grommet here for the GPU cables. Our power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case does support full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 165 millimeters. However, if you remove the hard drive cage at the bottom, power supplies up to 200 millimeters in length are supported. So if we move our case cables to the side, you'll see down at the bottom of the case we've also got a hard drive tray and this is where we find our case accessory box. So I'll show you what it contains in a minute. The hard drive tray is removable and is held on with four screws at the bottom of the case. So I'm just going to loosen the screws first of all. So with the screws loosened, you'll notice we're now able to move the position of the hard drive tray. We can put it to exactly where we want it and then just tighten the screws up to secure it in that place. I'm not planning to install any hard drive, so I'm going to remove the tray fully. So with the screws removed, it's just a simple matter of lifting the hard drive tray out of the case. Now with the tray removed, you can see our case's final fan mounting location. We've got a rail here and a rail here where you can mount a single 120mm fan at the bottom. So this is our hard drive tray and it will accommodate either a 2.5 inch drive, 3.5 inch drive or both. So if you want to mount both, you would mount the 2.5 inch drive here, screw it in from the back and then you would put the rubber mounts from the accessory box into the sides and then mount the 3.5 inch drive above it. I'm not going to show you how to do it here because I have done this in my pop air video in a similar drive tray with a 2.5 inch drive and 3.5 inch drive above it. So check out that video if you want to find out how to mount drives in the drive trays. So this is everything that comes in the accessory box. I've already mentioned you get an additional 2.5 inch drive bracket. We've got a cleaning cloth and great to see we've got loads of cable ties, particularly given how many Velcro straps is already included. We've got all our rubber mount screws, standoff and standoff removing tool. 
here. Um, I'm not going to go through these individually because there's a lovely diagram in the manual which tells you which screws you use where. So because the fans that come with the case don't have any RGB on them, I'm going to remove them and use the Leandi Uni fans. They're each held on with four screws. We're now ready to start working on the motherboard and we're going to install the CPU, the bracket for the CPU cutter, the M.2 SSD and our RAM before installing the motherboard in the case. To install our CPU we're going to need to open the socket so we need to push this lever down and out and all the way to the top and then we can open the socket cover. Then we can set our CPU into the socket and making sure the text is the correct way up. And once we're happy the CPU is in the socket we can close the cover back down if we apply a little bit of pressure here, the black bit of plastic will pop off and then all we need to do is close the lever again. Next we need to install our M.2 SSD and to access the socket we're going to need to remove the heatsink which is held on with two screws. So if you're using the motherboard for the first time you'll have some plastic protection here that you're going to need to remove and also on the underside of the heatsink. So all we need to do is insert our drive into the socket at a slight angle flatten it down and then we've got a little clip here which we're going to close to secure our drive in place. Now if you did want to install a second M.2 SSD there is another socket beneath this one. There's a couple of screws to remove. You can lift all this up and install your second drive and again I've shown how to do this in some of my other mini ITX builds. We can then replace our heatsink. Next we've got our RAM to install so we need to open the clips on the RAM slots. Then we need to line the RAM up with the slots. Once we're happy we've got everything lined up, it's just some firm pressure and the RAM is going to clip into place. The same thing with our second stick, we'll line it up with the slot. Once we're happy we've got everything lined up, it's just some firm pressure and the RAM is going to click into place. Next we can set the back plate for our CPU cooler into place. And then we've got one of these standoffs to screw on to each corner. Once we install our motherboard, it's actually going to block this cutout where our 8-pin EPS power supply cable is going to come through. So I'm just going to pass it through first of all before installing the motherboard. Then we can set the motherboard into place, lining it up with the standoffs beneath. Then we're going to use four of these screws with a little lip around the outside to secure the motherboard to the case. And then we can get our EPS cable plugged into the header at the top of the motherboard. Okay, next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in and our first case cable is our HD audio cable which is going to go into this header at the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring the cable through the cutout. Make sure we line it up the correct way because there's a pin missing on the header and a hole missing on the cable. Next we need to get our front panel connectors plugged in. On the motherboard itself there is only front panel connectors for a power switch. So what we would do is bring it through this cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. But that doesn't leave us anywhere to plug in these extra cables for our reset switch and our power LED. Um, the other option you have is there's a little add-in card that plugs into these two Type-C connectors and that gives you a full set of front panel connectors. And then you're going to be able to plug in your reset switch, your power button into here and your power LED. The only downside of that is I don't think the card looks quite as well with it in. So for this particular build I don't really need the reset switch or the power LED. So I'm happy just to plug this cable in directly to the motherboard and just have the power switch working. Then we've got our USB Type-C header so we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, push into place and then pull the access cable through to the back. Just above that we've got our USB 3.0 header so we'll bring our cable through the cutout line it up with the header and push into place and then again pull the excess cable through to the back. This is our power supply and it's what you call a fully modular power supply because it comes without any of the cables plugged in. I've already gone ahead and plugged in our 24 pin cable, a single PCIe cable because that's what our graphics card is going to need. I've also plugged in a SATA cable but although we're not going to install any SATA drives our Lian Li Unifan hub is going to need SATA power and then we've got space to plug in our 8 pin EPS cable once we've installed the power supply. So because we've gone with an SFX power supply the holes in the back of it aren't going to line up with the bracket in our case 
But fortunately, the power supply does come with an SFX to ATX bracket. So we just need to line this up with the holes on the back of the power supply and then use the screws that comes with the power supply to secure this bracket to the power supply. Next, we're going to use four of the large screws from the case accessory box to secure our cases bracket to the back of the power supply. Just before we install our power supply into the case, it's important to point out this is the power supply's intake fan, so we're going to want to install it facing down the way. So we pull all the cables through, slide the power supply into place, and then we just need to tighten the thumb screws up at the back to secure the power supply into place. So I've just tried to plug in our 8-pin EPS cable into our power supply, but unfortunately the cable is just too short to reach the power supply. So there is two options. We could turn the power supply round the other way so the fan is facing up the way. Um, alternatively, what we could do is add in a cable extension. So I think I'm just going to add a cable extension in uh, up at the motherboard end of the cable. So it is going to mean I'm going to have to remove the motherboard and add the cable back in. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I actually decided to go with a white cable extension so we can plug our power supply cable into the cable extension. And then we're going to have enough cable to get it plugged in down at the bottom to the power supply. So I've just sized up our 24 pin cable and it's also going to be too short. So using an SFX power supply maybe wasn't the brightest idea in this case. So what I'm going to do, I do have some white cable extensions for the 24 pin connector and the GPU cable. So next we can bring our 24 pin cable through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. And then we've got some cable combs on the cable we can use to help tidy it up. We are now ready to start working our AIO and rather than use the fans that came with the AIO, I'm going to use the Lian Li Uni fans on the radiator as well because I think they're going to look much better. So the first thing to do is join our fans together. So we just need to push them together and push them down. And then we've got this little connector here to go on the end. So again, it's just a matter of lining it up at the end and pushing it into place. And then we can set the fans onto the radiator. Then we're going to want to use the long radiator screws that came with the I.O. to connect the fans to the radiator. Next, we can insert our I.O. at the front of the case and secure it into place at the front using the short radiator screws that came with the I.O. Next, we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. Then we can lower our CPU cooler down into place. I have used this CPU cooler before, so I've removed the plastic protection on the back of it. If you're using it for the first time, make sure you remove the plastic protection before lowering it down. And then we've got a thumb screw to go on to each corner. Then we just need to make sure the logo is straight. It's simply a matter of just twisting it until we've got it in a straight position. So we've got two cables coming from our pump. The first is a four pin PWM connector. So I'm just gonna route it up towards the top of the motherboard, which is gonna go into our pump header, which is here. So I'm just gonna pass it underneath the bracket to keep the cable looking nice and tidy. And then we'll get the cable plugged in to the pump header at the top of the motherboard. Our other cable is a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable and it needs to plug into the ARGB header which is just right here. So again, I'm just going to route the cable underneath the bracket. We'll then bring it down the side of the motherboard and get it plugged in to the header. And then I'm just going to tuck the excess cable up behind the pump cables. We've then got the cables on our Lian Li Uni fans to plug in. One is an ARGB connector. I'll talk you through that later on when we install the rest of our case fans. The other is a four pin PWM connector. Now, unfortunately, it's just a little bit too short to reach our CPU fan header. So I have got a cable extension for it. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm then gonna pass the cable through to the front and get it plugged into our CPU fan header, which is just to the left of our pump header and then we'll pass the excess cable through to the back. 
Next thing to do is get our top fans installed. Although we do have the removable bracket, because we've got so much here at the top, they're only going to go in at a certain place. I think it's actually going to be easier to put the bracket back into place so we're installing the fans on the bracket in the right orientation. So we'll set our bracket into place and it is actually quite tight to get it installed with this extension cable here. But if we push down on it and then push back, we are able to get the bracket where it needs to go. And then we'll just re-secure the bracket with the two screws we removed earlier on. So I've got a group of two Lee and Lee Uni fans for the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is pass the cable coming from them through to the back. Um, one of the things you'll notice I've done is I've loosened the screws holding our front radiator in place and actually slid the radiator down as far as it will go. And then we'll move it back up into place once the top fans are installed. So we can slide the fans into place at the top. And we're just catching here in this cable. So I'm just going to push them down here and then try and get them slid as far backwards as I can. And then we can secure the fans into place at the top. And then we can replace the top dust filter and our top panel. And then I'm just going to slide our front radiator up as far as I can get it. There we go. And then I'll just tighten the screws up at the front again. Next we need to add an AL120 uni fan in at the rear as an exhaust. But unfortunately, there's no way we're going to actually be able to fit the cables coming from the fans through this cutout at the top. And it would actually have been really useful to have wired these in right at the start. So if I was doing this again, I would wire this from the start. What I'm going to do instead is just pass them out the back at the bottom cutout, but it won't look quite as tidy. And then we can screw the fan into place at the back. And then I'm going to set a single fan down at the bottom set to intake and then we can screw it into place from underneath. What I've done, I've just put the screws in loosely. I'm going to manage all the power supply cables and then slide this fan as far towards the back of the case as I can, where it's going to be directing our, towards our GPU. Okay, next thing to do is get our fans plugged into the Lian Lee Uni Fan Hub. And our hub has four channels, and each of the channels, there's space for two cables, and it's the two cables from each group of Lian Lee Uni Fans. So I'm going to make a start with our top fans and I'm going to plug them into channel number one. So there is the ARGB connector, that's it in, and the PWM connector as well. Then I'm going to bring our rear fan cables across and get them plugged into channel number two. So PWM connector and also the ARGB connector. Next we've got the fans on the radiator. And I'm going to plug the connector from it into channel number three. We've only got the RGB connector because we've actually plugged the PWM connector from it directly into our CPU fan header. And then that just leaves us with the cables on our bottom fan. Because it's down at the bottom, I don't really want to add any extra light down there. So I'm not going to plug the RGB cable in, but I am going to plug the PWM cable in. So I'm just going to plug it into channel number three as well. And then we've got some double-sided adhesive on the back of the hub. So here looks like a pretty good place to stick it. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick it down here. Coming from the bottom of the hub, we've got three cables. One is a SATA power cable. So I'm going to plug that into the SATA cable coming from our power supply to power the hub. So it's just a matter of lining the connectors up the right way round and pushing them together. Next, we've got a USB cable. We're going to need to plug that into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard to allow it to control the hub. And then we've got a splitter cable here. One is an ARGB connector and one is a 4-pin PWM connector. So you need to plug the ARGB connector into a header on your motherboard. Um, and to do that, it'll allow your motherboard to control the Unifan hub. I'm going to use Leon Lee's L Connect to control it, so I'm not going to plug this cable in. But I do want to control the fan speed using our motherboard, so I'm going to plug the PWM connector in. You can also control fan speed using Leandy's L Connect. So I'm going to pass these two cables through to the front. Okay, so down at the bottom next to your ARGB connector, we've got a USB 2.0 header. So if we go ahead and line the cable up and push in just to the left of the USB header, we've got our system fan header. So we'll get our cable plugged in. 
and again pull all the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our graphics card so we need to remove the two slot covers. We can open the PCI expansion slot on the motherboard and then we just need to line our graphics card up with the slot. Okay, and once we're happy we've got everything lined up, it's just some firm pressure. And the graphics card is going to clip into place. Then we just need to secure the graphics card using the two thumb screws we removed earlier on. Then we can bring our PCIe cables through the cutout, line them up with the graphics card and push into place. And then we'll pull the excess cable through to the back, tidying the cable up with the included cable combs. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management. We've got plenty of Velcro cable straps to help manage the cables. And importantly, we're going to try and manage our power supply cables as best we can so they're out of the way of the bottom fan. Okay, so that's the build complete and I think you'll agree it looks absolutely stunning. I've gone ahead and set the PC up, I haven't recorded those steps. If you need to know how to install Windows, get the drivers installed, control the RGB software, particularly for these fans and with the Zeus motherboard, the guide you're going to want to see is my Leandy O11 Dynamic Evo build guide and you'll find a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is a full case review. In that I'm going to share my thoughts on having built in this case, what went well, what I would do if I was building again. I'm going to do detailed thermal testing and a whole variety of different configurations to find out what is the best way to build in this case. So if you are thinking of doing a build, you're definitely going to want to check out that video. And again, you'll find a link to that video in the description. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.